Today we're back again with the coronavirus, but this time with some good news in terms of research findings. We've been hearing a lot about antibodies, how effective they are, how their levels are going down quite rapidly, and possible reinfections. But there is a new study out that offers a solid case for the argument against reinfection if a person has already been infected, has recovered and has neutralizing antibodies in them. In this video, we're going to talk about a fishing vessel that departed from Seattle in the US in May for about 20 days and had an outbreak inside of it while it was at sea. A research team from the University of Washington then conducted a study on the crew members and made some interesting findings. My name is Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. One of the trends we are noticing with antibodies is, of course, that antibody levels start to fall after two to three months in most patients after they recover. This initially sounded alarming when the findings were made, but we've of course understood that this doesn't mean that our body loses all protection against the virus. We've seen before in detail in an episode on how the immune system works and some of you might have also heard on a recent Cut the Clutter episode about innate and adaptive immune responses. The innate immune response is genetic and default and is quick. It kicks in as soon as an infection occurs and is usually not as effective at destroying pathogens. But the innate immune response acquires information about the novel pathogen that is attacking our body and then passes it on to T cells. T cells are the ones that then trigger the adaptive immune response. The adaptive immune response is precise, it's more personalized to the kind of pathogen that is attacking our bodies, it is sharper, it's more accurate, it has memory and it produces neutralizing antibodies. The memory part is important. Memory T cells and memory B cells, which are a part of the adaptive immune response and are types of T cells and B cells, have a database of antigens between them that the body has encountered. And they can recognize when a previous antigen or a virus or a pathogen comes along next time and they can quickly mount a direct, immediate, strong and effective immune response and neutralize the pathogen. So we are covered when it comes to lowered antibody levels because when there is no infection anymore, why would there be antibodies? They will be produced again when the virus tries to infect us again. What we don't fully understand is if all of these processes work as effectively as they should because this virus seems to confuse our immune systems a lot. As we again discussed a few days ago in another video, a Yale study led by Professor Akiko Iwasaki found that the virus confuses our immune system and in many people, their immune systems aren't able to figure out which response pathway to take because the immune system doesn't understand that the pathogen is a virus that invades cells. In some people, the invoked immune response seems to be targeting either non-existent bacteria or non-existent worms or fungi, all of which do not invade cells. But the novel coronavirus does. So the body doesn't really mount an effective attack. We didn't know exactly what other systems the virus has been messing up inside of us, but we knew very early on that when the adaptive response kicks in and neutralizing antibodies are produced, they do work. That is how people recover. But can they get reinfected after recovery? And what is the concentration of antibodies needed to prevent reinfection? This study from the Seattle fishing vessel by the University of Washington researchers is probably the first early finding to kind of conclusively say that no, people who have neutralizing antibodies don't really get reinfected that quickly. 122 people were on board this fishing vessel called American Dynasty, of which 113 were men and 9 were women. All members had been tested for the virus and for antibodies as a part of routine screening before the vessel departed Seattle. The results showed that three people already had antibodies and they tested negative for the virus as well. Now, when the vessel was out at sea, there was an outbreak inside of it. 
the attack rate was very high out of 122 people 104 people got infected which meant that the attack rate was 85.2 percent many of these did have mild symptoms and some people were also asymptomatic but the american dynasty vessel was forced to return to shore after 18 days when one crew member became so ill that they needed to be hospitalized then when everyone returned to shore tests were conducted again the rt-pcr results showed that the three people who had neutralizing antibodies prior to departure did not get reinfected while the other 104 people had novel infections this spells good news and avoids a lot of complications for us one of the biggest insights we got from the study is that the amount of antibodies needed to prevent reinfection is not all that high the amount of antibodies in our blood is measured in titers which shows the concentrations of antibodies in our blood the three sailors who were protected had a varying range of titers two had only moderate quantities of neutralizing antibodies so what was reassuring was that even with moderate quantities it is enough to prevent reinfection when antibodies are still in our blood these findings also match findings that were made in animal experiments as well this study is not yet peer reviewed but it was received very positively by immunologists and virologists and gives us hope for lesser complications with the development and functioning of a vaccine but the study also raised some important questions the first is that Testing was done by an Abbott architect assay, which determined that six people had antibodies before departure. But the researchers were able to determine that three of these were false positives. The Abbott test claims that it gives only one false positive for every 100 samples or a 99% specificity, which was clearly inaccurate. So it brings into question the specificity of a number of other tests as well. Some virologists also say that instead of looking at antibodies in the blood, we should be measuring antibodies found in the nose or in our saliva because those are the primary pathways of the virus's entry. The authors also note that one of the three individuals who technically fell into the category of not being infected ended up generating a very weak, mild signal for the virus through two different manufacturers RT-PCR tests. The authors note that while this might not be an actual reinfection, it could be from just exposure to the virus on the boat. So the virus hasn't really caused the disease in this person, but it's still in the body because the person was exposed to it and their antibodies are already fighting it off. There are caveats, of course. The prime being that three is too small a number. However, these early findings still hold promise and help us remove some anticipated complications that we thought would occur earlier. In conclusion, there are three major takeaways from the study as outlined by virologist Marion Koopmans and they're fairly intuitive. One is that even moderate antibody titers are good enough to prevent reinfection and keep us safe for now. Second is that our testing is simply not as accurate as we think or hope that it is. The entire crew got tested before boarding. The researchers do mention that they could not access test results for two people, but it's still clear that those two also tested negative, which is why the crew did depart with them on board. However, there was still an outbreak inside, which meant that the virus escaped detection. And lastly, when an opportunity is presented for a high attack rate, there tends to be a high attack rate. So once again, it comes down to us remembering that the risk of transmission is the highest in enclosed spaces without ventilation and that physical distancing works and works well.